mostly when we've had skin transplants in the past, they've taken them from other parts of the body. But that would be impossible in a face transplant? Well, this is correct, and that's where uh, the part of my research which is presented in the book is uh, uh, giving an outline of how much of the skin you really need in order to cover entire face. And we never realized that uh, face, uh, looking at the face, uh, we don't realize uh, how much of skin you need because we look at this uh, up front, we are not looking three-dimensionally. And we found in anatomy lab that you need a 1,200 square centimeters of the skin in order to cover entire face. That's 184 square inches. That's correct. That's an awful lot. Well, you can't do it in patches? Uh, if you do it in patches, you exactly get what you said. You have a patch-like look of the face. And that's what is uh, showing uh, on the patient's face. We see many patients who are burn victims who have this quilt-like work on the face. And uh, the problem with uh, skin taken from your own body is that it's very thin, it's not pliable, and it's taken from different parts, and each part have a different color. So that is giving this um, kind of artificial look to the face of the patient. There's also a structural problem, isn't there? For example, you just don't put some skin over the nose area and have it function as a nose. Absolutely. This is something which we are not realizing that the face is almost like a very complex organ. It has what we call subunits, a unit of functionality, and these include the nose, the eyelids, the lips, the uh, ears, each unit be being very specific, and we do not have them in the body. 